Yo, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Spigot series. This time I'm going to teach you how to work with entities. Alright guys, so this time, like I said, I'm going to teach you how to work with entities, which is basically a way for you to spawn things into the world and then, you know, make them do things and appear in certain ways and stuff like that so yeah i mean it's just better to show you obviously so let's just get started so i'm just going to delete this here i've already made a project for the entities plugin that we're going to make it's just going to be example plugin so nothing crazy we're just going to have a simple uh event here um we'll just call it um move event uh it doesn't matter so anyway move event and then we're just going to implement um the listener of course okay and so entities, like I said, are just like uh, things that are in the, I don't know what I said, but they're basically just things that are in the Minecraft world, like um, mobs, those are entities, you know, items are entities, I believe, yeah, pretty much, um, armor stands, stuff like that, okay? And armor stands is something we're, uh, we're going to go over that next episode, so stay tuned for that, if you're interested. So, yeah, so anyway, um, let's go ahead and make this here, so event handler, okay public void on player move play oops player move just like that so to make an entity you can do one of two things you can either use the player um, objects to make an entity or you can use the uh, just w with bucket itself okay so let's just start off easy with the player object they're pretty much doing the same thing but it's still two different ways so let me show you so we're gonna go ahead and make a player object here player player equals player oh wait at that uh, e dot get player just like that and then let's auto import or import I mean player so anyway um, now that we have the player object we can call upon the special spawn entity method but first we need to get the world because you have to um, well the plugin has to know what world to spawn the entity inside of so get world dot spawn entity and here we go so control P to see the uh, parameters if you don't see them and so the first thing we need is a location since we're using the player object we can simply do player dot get location and if you don't want to use the player's location if that's not convenient for you you can you can simply make a new location so do new location and then inside of here you can put the XYZ of where you want the location to be okay so that will do that but for now let's just use player location just as a demonstration and so once you have the location now it's asking for entity type which is going to be your actual entity so that would be the same thing as putting a material for item stack so let's go and make that so entity type and then we'll just type it out entity type Dot, and then you have all the entities in the game of Minecraft, okay? Yeah, so it pretty much has every entity that you would ever find, every mob, anything like that, that you would ever find in 13.2. So, um, we could find, I don't even know what an evoker is, I don't really play Minecraft that much anymore. But, um, tropical fish, that's pretty cool, so we can spawn a bunch of tropical fishes. Um, or fish, I don't know, the plural of it, but anyway, so let's just spawn some turtles, that's pretty cool, right? So we can spawn a bunch of turtles, so basically what this will do, of course, is spawn turtles every time I move. So that's going to be really spammy, but just for the fun of it, let's see what happens. So that's all we need for now. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate what happens whenever we spawn entities. So let's go ahead and register this, um, you know, listener here. So get servers dot get plugin manager dot register events, new move events, and this, just like that. Pretty simple stuff, right? So let's go ahead and open up our Raven here, and then we're going to run this just like that. Alright, it's building for us now at the bottom, as you can see in the console. Alright, looks good. Now it's done, so we can right-click target, then do show and explore right there. And then now we can open up the target file, folder, I mean, and then copy this f jar file right there, and then we can move it into plugins so that we can use it. Now we're going to um, start our server, and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so I loaded in the server, and as you can see here, I'm not even moving, it's just already spawning so many turtles that it's moving for me because the bodies of the turtles are pushing me around. So it works, as you can see, every time I move the event, the player move event is triggered and it spawns turtles. So that's pretty cool. So uh, let's do game mode creative so we can fly out of here. And as you can see, we're spawning even more turtles. There's like literally an ocean of turtles now. That's pretty awesome and insane at the same time. And they're dying from fall damage. Oh my gosh. Okay, so anyway, let's go ahead and go back to our program and start messing around with some more stuff. 
Uh, let me just uh, stop. Let's log out so I don't lag to death. All right, cool. So we'll go back here. And so now, um, so that's how you spawn an entity with you know the player objects. And just an idea of how many entities you can do. You could do in pretty much a, like a bunch of stuff. Like um, let's see here, we could do lightning. We could do llamas. We could do uh, pretty much just a lot of stuff, really. Um, yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. So let me show you how to spawn an entity with the actual bucket itself without having to reference a player object. So you can simply do that with bucket dot get world like we did, and then we just gotta provide a world name. So we could do player dot get world, but if we don't have uh, have access to the player object, of course, we could just simply do world, just like this, because um, we know from you know our file here and our thing that our world is called world. So that's how we provide that or know what it's called. So we're pro providing the name of the world we want to spawn the entity in, and then dot spawn entity. So now it's asking for a location. So in this case, if we don't have access, like I said, to the player location, we could simply do new location, and then provide some parameters here. So for the first parameter, it's asking for the world. So we could just pretty much do again. We could do uh, you can't type world like this, so you need to get like a um, you know an object representation. So we could simply probably just do. If you have access to player, you can simply do player.getWorld, but if you don't, which is the whole point of this, you can do bucket.getWorld again. Uh, get world, world, just like that. That's going to do the same thing. And so now what we need is a, you know, XYZ, you know, the coordinates of the world, where you, where you, where you want to put it in the world. So we can go into our game real quick and find some coordinates where we want to put the entity. Let's see here. Alright, so let's use whatever uh, we're at right now. So we'll use 218 by 80 by 154. Let's try remembering that. 218, 180. Is it 80 or 180? I'm tired. 80 by 154. Okay. Alright, so those are the coordinates. So that's pretty much all you need to specify location. So now let's go ahead and specify the next parameter side of here, which is going to be the entity itself. And then we'll just choose something. Uh, we could do turtle again if we want to, but let's try skeletons. Skeletons. All right. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's going to spawn a skeleton every time we move, and um, so that's how we do that. But let's say you want to, you know, change some properties um, of the entity that you just created, right? So you could pretty much just do that by getting the entity as a variable. So let's try doing that. So we'll do entity. And then we'll just create a new entity object. I accidentally got rid of something. Bucket just like that. Uh, right there. Okay, cool. So that is an accident. So yeah, let's give our object a name. So we'll call it entity is equal to, and then we could, that's our entity on the right side. So entity is equal to, you no, know, whatever. So anyway, um, now that we have an entity as a variable, you know, a variable object reference or whatever you want to call it, we could do a bunch of methods here upon our um, entity. So we could do, um, let's see here, we can set the gravity. So um, obviously by default gravity is going to be set to true because things fall. But if you set it to false, that means that there's no downward acceleration upon the objects in the world. So that means they won't fall, of course. So that's pretty cool if you want to do that. And then entity, we could also, there's just a bunch of stuff we could do. We could set it to glowing, so it'll glow. We could try that. Entity dot set custom name, or we actually, we could create a custom name too custom name set custom name right there we'll call it um, daddy skeleton okay and then of course we um, we saw that other method set custom name visible so we should probably make it visible so that will do that and that sounds like enough for now so let's go ahead and test it out see what the heck we just did okay so just to recap before I you know put the plug inside the server we're just creating an entity on spawning it upon movement so every time I move you know it calls the move event here and then it's creating a new entity and every entity is going to be um, has no gravity as you can see here it says it's false and then it will be glowing and then it'll also set a custom name and make it visible okay so let's try all that and I'll be right back all right I am back and as you can see here since I'm moving a bunch of skeletons are spawning they're catching on fire because it's daytime skeletons catch on fire during daytime and so um, yeah they're not falling because of gra there's no gravity right so watch this if I bump, bump into them Boom, then they're just gonna go flying. Pretty cool, right? Um, so that's how you do that. And see, there's a bunch of them spawning randomly now. Just they're hitting each other, so they're just shooting out. 
So, I mean, that's crazy. Pretty cool stuff, right? And as you can see, they have the custom name that we gave it, Daddy Skeleton. And I'm sure we can make it color if we want to, if we use some chat coloring. Pretty awesome stuff. And then all their loot is falling, falling to the ground. So that's how you do that. Um, let's go ahead and see what else we can do. Let's see here. We could set them to be invulnerable, meaning they won't take damage. So set invulnerable to true. We could do that if we want to. And what else? Let's see. Hmm. And this is a bunch of stuff, you know. We could set the fall distance, the fire ticks. So I just advise that you play around with this. It's pretty fun to mess with, and uh, we can make some pretty cool, uh, pretty cool plugins in the future. And so yeah, I mean that's it pretty much to this. You know, we just you know how to end it. You just know how to spawn a plugin now, and then you know make it do things like set the properties of the plug. I mean of the entity. Did I say plugin? You know how to spawn an entity now and then make it do stuff and look like a certain way and all, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, pretty simple. But if you have any questions about what we did, you can ask a question in the comment section. Next episode, we're going to be working with, um, you know, um, what's, it, what's it called? Armor stands. And armor stands are pretty cool. They're also entities. We're going to be using the same thing that we just learned in this episode to build upon that to make armor stands. And armor stands, um, they have some special methods associated with them too also. So that's why it's worth making a video on. And with armor stands, and most importantly, you can actually make holograms. So that's going to be fun to do. And we're going to eventually move on to making a um, armor stand plugin, in which there's going to be a GUI because I'm, I'm going to teach you GUIs next. And so it's just going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so stay tuned in the series, and I'll be showing you a bunch of cool stuff. And uh, if you have any suggestions, you can leave a comment in the comment section about what you want to see, because I'm going to try and do a video on pretty much every concept that I can. So yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section. Or we could, uh, you could join a Discord link in the description. There's a link there. You would click on it. You know, join our Discord, hang out with us, ask questions, whatever you want to do, and I'll try to help you and stuff like that. Also, one more thing, I promised. Um, there's a link here in the description. Also, besides the Discord link, there's a link to all of the code from today's episode. Okay, so make sure you check it out. It's pretty simple code because our t uh, episode was short today. But yeah, um, make sure you bookmark for future reference and stuff like that. Okay. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.